So it's a great pleasure of mine on behalf of Tokyo Live 2021 to introduce to you this very interesting symposium on management of biliary stenosis at the hilum. And to cover this topic, we have got two eminent professors from the world. One is Professor Rungsen from Thailand and we have Professor Irisawa from Japan. So to begin with, I would like to introduce to you first Professor Rangsan, who is going to talk to you on the new endoscopic concept and treatment for hyalur malignancy. Now, Professor Rangsan actually graduated from the Chulalongkorn University in Thailand. And then interestingly, he did his internal boards from United States, from Louisiana, from New, New Orleans, and then he did GI fellowship also from United States, after which he did a fellowship in ERCP at Indiana. And now Professor Rangsan is the professor of medicine, chief division of gastroenterology, and he's the director of the Center of Excellence of Innovation in Endoscopy at the Chulalongkorn University, Bangkok, Thailand. He's been a founder member of the Thailand Association of GI Endoscopy, TAGE, and he's an avid teacher. And his main interests are in colorectal cancer, in ERCP, in telemedicine, and very recently in artificial intelligence. So I would like to request Professor Rangsan to share his slides and give a lecture on the new endoscopic concept and treatment for hyalur malignancy. Thank you very much, for Sir uh, Amit, uh, for your very kind introduction. And also, I have to thank the Tokyo Life uh, 2021 team, especially Dr. Uh, Inoli, for me, uh, for giving me an opportunity to share my thought about, you know, the enough equipment for the high obstruction. Let me go on to my slide. Can you see my slide now? Yes, we can see it. Excellent. Okay, my uh, task today is to lead you to uh, the idea on the new endoscopic treatment for malignant hyalur obstruction. And this day, I think I'm going to the fact that we mainly do with the new brain and the metallic stem. And the new thing is coming up is the uh, endoscopic ultrasound and also the radar frequency ablation. So let's talk about the idea uh, of this uh, obstruction first. As you can see that the hyalur obstruction from cancer, mainly the from the biopsy, is the main area of obstruction uh, contain about 70% of the cases. Unfortunately, only 20% of them become resectable. And usually they perform with, uh, you know, non-specific symptoms. Uh, many of them are presented uh, with tennis joints. This is a picture uh, more than uh, 10 years ago when we were young, we first admit, uh, we have the consensus on the manager of this topic in Pattaya, Thailand. I can say that the majority of the kids who come to the doctor and what we perform and provide to them is really strange. There are three uh, aspects that you need to consider before you consider about drainage configuration. First is the patient life expectancy, benchmark level, and liver volumetry. As you can see that if you look at the left segment, uh, it contains about 35% of the liver volume. And you look at the right portrait, it's about 30%, and the right entry is about 35%. So what's important about this? Over that year, we published our consensus uh, 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 in the JGS. Based on this, we say that uh, the interesting uh, landmark paper that we need to drain about 50% of the lead volume to achieve uh, jaundice resolution. And before that, you may require a good roadmap by either MRT or the new one is the MDCT display. But when we're talking about the drainage, it, it doesn't mean it has to be bilateral only, because many patients have uh, you know, a brand anatomy. So it can be, uh, we, we better say, multi-segmental drainage in terms of 
the combination could be bright possibly and bright angular could be uh, something enough to achieve more than 2% of the volume. And as you can see from this paper, that the patient who got uh, drained more than half, they achieved John this little better than the one who did not uh, get half. Let's talk about the abnormal anatomy. According to this, one of the things that I, I mentioned is the atrophic lobe. Apparently, these patients look like patients have only the right system available, so there's no need to do an electric test. In those who got vessel enhancement uh, or invasion, like this one, hepatic heart invasion or portable invasion, these are the future atrophic lobe. And if you join this segment, uh, it may not be something that's useful in the future. So let's talk about the drain. In early year, 20 years ago, uh, we did not know much. So uh, many of them end up with plastic stem. I can show you our uh, earlier publication showing that the patient, we split them into three groups uh, according to uh, their bismuth level, one, two, and three, and four. As you can see here, the incidence of post ERGT drainage cholangitis was the highest in the group one with, uh, in the group three with the advanced high obstruction bismuth three and four. And the time for the exchange of the stem is uh, very short in the group three as well, uh, you know, almost half or double compared to the patient with this much one level. What else? After that, we learned uh, another group in Thailand also had the randomized control study published in GIE <clears throat> almost uh, 10 years later, showing that uh, the metal stent performed better than plastic stent. The reason is the diameter of the stent is much bigger and the flow is just much uh, better than plastic stent. As you can see that patients with plastic stent and metal stent have a uh, different in terms of uh, cumulative survival and uh, better off for the metal stent here. So in conclusion for this one, definitely magnetic stent is better than plastic stent, but what is the technique? Because uh, the debate is on, is it has to be side by side or set in segment, as you can uh, see from this one. Professor John Homun uh, uh, recently has alluded to the comparison between the technique with the stand in stand or side by side. In terms of success rate, it was not dip, uh, uh, different uh, uh, you know, from the side by side, but this one showed a uh, perfect technique. But I can say that depending on the country, I can see that in Japan and Korea, many people prefer to use uh, stand in stand. But in uh, Southeast Asia and some other uh, countries in Western countries, uh, many of us prefer side by side. But at the end, he demonstrated that the efficacy of bilateral step instant and step, uh, side by side deployment may be similar in terms of total adverse event, technical, clinical success, stent tendency, and survival. The stent tendency rate at three and six months was slightly higher in the stent instant but this was not uh, significant in terms of statistics. So what we, we should do, even we try to drain bilaterally, but as you know that many of us encounter failure, sometimes we end up uh, uh, putting only one stand, and what to do if the other drug is already contaminated but cannot drain? Of course, killing that is the problem. So first, in our uh, consensus, we recommend that these has to be performed by the extreme really endoscopy with uh, multi dietary backup, meaning that you have to have the interventional radiologist available because the health obstruction, according to the difficulty of ERC index by choose and airborne, is considered as the highest level, grade five. So, what else from the inter inter interventional or pertinent drainage? Now, this day, we could use ERC guided really drainage. So, how would we do that? in terms of drainage. As, as you can see that there are two areas that the ears can access. One is uh, from the stomach through the left intrahepatic system. The other one is right system from breathing up here. And this can be used uh, for the stomach is this uh, special designed stent. Or you can use classic stent as you can see many of those in Japan using this. The idea is keep the track open and not to have leakage uh, to the living capsule. That's why the part, this part has to be inside the capsule, but this has to be deeper inside the internal cavity to prevent the subsegmental obstruction. 
What is the RCP for drainage? As you can see, this is the patient who got the, the sense from the RCP through capillum in the right system. And the left system, they got the uh, left system from hepatico gastrostomy. Another idea, if you get to the right system, you can provide the hepatico denostomy. And usually, we, we use fully covered stem because it's very straightforward and no worry about subsegmental obstruction. The pilot, uh, uh, our pioneer uh, uh, research has came, uh, has come from the Japanese group. In this one, although it's a, uh, a few number of cases uh, 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 being failed, but majority of the cases become successful in those third cases. And as you can see that the stent dysfunction uh, was about uh, one fourth of the cases and the uh, Tendency time is about two months, but this is probably they do the again uh, this much of cancer uh, in their population. So the new can I would say that uh, you may try with your skin first and then try to drain to achieve more than two percent of your growing drainage. Either left and right anterior, left and right posterior, or right anterior and right posterior. So if the right lobe can be drained. SMS, I mean, the stent can be deployed, and then you are looking for using the PCB and US as a backup. In this uh, uh, regard, we call as the rest, then for combination of endoscopic retrograde fungal chemotherapy and the endoscopic ultrasound. As you can see here, this is the uh, feature of in terms of what you do. Uh, you can still perform and get uh, uh, stenting. Sometimes you have do you not know, obstruction. Uh, and mainly, uh, a lot of people do with the left system in terms of hepatical gastrostomy. Uh, less in number, but uh, in case that you cannot do selective uh, generation to the right system, we end up with uh, add on uh, US guided drainage through the hepatical denoxyphere. So, this is a variety of combinations, as I mentioned earlier. Started from high obstruction here. You got the ESP to the right and HDS to the left. You got the ESP to the right, I'm sorry, I would say to the left, and get HDS with uh, the right system. Or we can use all the combination. So let's show, uh, me, let me show you a case that we uh, perform this procedure. This is the patient who got uh, a hepatic mass encasing the uh, BD system, and the that is what the hyalocolangio carcinoma. And in this one, when we uh, start looking at the uh, liver volume, we better see the total view. And you can see that there's still a lot of area to be left here. The first uh, technical gas run was performed earlier, plus uh, one ESP, but end up with incomplete drainage of this right system here. And we think the patient still don't have enough drainage uh, from the uh, first, the gas drop, the, the first one, uh, you can see the same way from the uh, you know, segment two. So now we uh, select segment three uh, for the puncture. And then, uh, as you can see, after we start uh, contract injection, although the, some of the contracts go to the uh, previous SDS site, still not uh, adequate. So with this one, uh, we perform another SDS by doing the same technique. Usually, I think for the Insava, we will uh, uh, do this in uh, this technique in detail later. But then in, 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 Thai, in Thailand, uh, we uh, provide uh, uh, you know, uh, with a uh, system. This one is a PO ball system uh, with metal stand. Uh, another uh, idea we use a classic stand. Uh, we just use a double picture stand uh, to bring this patient. So far, we don't see the difference, but uh, we are. Analyzing the different interim outcome with the long term aspect. So, with this, you can see that there are two HDS stents left in the stomach, and this patient ended up with a joint resolution and, uh, you know, being well after, uh, you know, the three stents uh, were selected one in the right system from the RC and two from US guide finish. So, uh, in this regard, we earlier this year we published our result, and as you can see that uh, this one the control we use the particular drainage, and you can see that the number of frequently obstruction in the group who under the US was significantly lower uh, than the PPD, 26 percent compared to 88 percent, 
and the time or number of the intervention at three and six months respectively was much lower in the patients who underwent USI training. So I think it's US, uh, the key method is probably the tension is much longer than doing drainage uh, from the skin. What else can we do is if the patient who got the high obstruction is the eye ablation. Uh, there are a few systems available uh, in uh, the world right now, and this one can show that with the bipolar uh, technique, uh, this is ablation to the stricture side, and then either you place the plastic or metal stem, it will not be you know, the perfect solution. But the, the thing that we say, we still don't have the uh, standard recipe for this, the only people will use about seven to 10 watts with uh, 70 to 80 cells with a mass in one or two minutes. Usually because the hilum area contains a lot of vessels, especially the portal vein. So be careful about the heat sink effect and vessel injury. And in the sharp angulation, because this uh, probe are somewhat rigid. So sharp angulation may not be something that can be done easy, uh, easily. And uh, compared to other acoustic compression, uh, we see that the vital cancer of Kalanjo perform better after uh, eye population uh, than those. But the question, as I mentioned, that this day we uh, don't know which is better between putting plastic stem or the metric stem. And uh, in terms of precise setting, temperature, I think people have to uh, make a uh, discussion on this one. Uh, there are some risks of perforation, but this is in the animal model that uh, usually the bile is probably much thinner. And you can see that if the patient got tumor, uh, the thick uh, bile from tumor may probably prevent this effect uh, better than animal model. And I can uh, show you the video before ablation, during ablation, and after ablation. In this uh, video that Kalanji uh, uh, was performed, uh, prior to after ablation, and this is after ablation, you can see that the, the char and you know dead is low. But the most important thing is the lumen is open wide enough for the transduct to pass through the structure that appears to be very tight uh, earlier. So uh, I think uh, uh, another you know he, uh, uh, published uh, endoscopy uh, last year on their result, and they can show that. The you know the results uh, of that patient measure of them are advanced uh, this much uh, you know uh, level and uh, about one fourth level of clinical post procedure and the uh, treatment uh, compared to uh, actually there are two papers but performed by the same group so I put these two together also this is not, not I would say this more like control control. As you can see here, the survival time without ablation in the earlier group show was only 140 days. But when you perform ablation plus 10, the survival and RBO became much, much longer. But this is not comparable because they did not put in the same table. 230 days compared to 140 days. And this is the uh, cumulative, uh, uh, you know, tendency and also survival uh, compared in the two groups. As you can see that uh, the one who underwent isolation has a better cumulative survival than the one uh, who did not have. So ladies and gentlemen, in summary, I would say high structure is a big challenge for interventionists and require multidisciplinary approach. Standard treatments to ERCP, but new feet on the block are uh, added ablation is becoming more and more popular as a complementary benefit because uh, the analysis can perform this thing in their one single unit without uh, waiting for intervention uh, to help them. But still, they, they still have a good friend of work. At this moment, the side by side stenting or uh, stenting stent still yield no difference in technical and clinical success. ERC and ES can provide good combination for multi segmental intrahepatic bleed drainage. And the role of radio frequency ablation is promising, but more certainly unneeded. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer at the end of my talk. The team is most important. Together, you can move at the mountain. Thank you for your attention once again. So, thank you so much, uh, Professor Rangsan. It was a very comprehensive lecture from your side. 
Now, because uh, there is going to be a little similarity between the two topics and little overlap of the concepts, uh, we can take the question answers at the end of both the lectures. Uh, so I would, now I would like to request uh, Professor Irisawa to to give the to the to give his lecture. I just would like to introduce to you Professor Irisawa. Irisawa uh, is the professor and chairman Department of Gastroenterology at the Tokyo Medical University. And he, before he started this, he initially worked with uh, Professor Man Manu Bhutani at the University of Florida as a visiting faculty. And uh, later on, he was the professor and director at the Aizu Medical Center till 2018, after which he moved to the Tokyo University. The main interests, uh, research interests of Professor Irisawa are, of course, pancreatic biliary, EUS and ERCP. And he plays a very active role in various societies, Jap Japanese GI endoscopy society, biliary society, Japanese Society for Portal Hypertension, Gastroenterology Association, as well as the Japanese Pancreatic Association. It's our great pleasure to listen to Professor Iris Irisawa, who is going to talk to us on endoscopic palliation for uh, biliary stenosis at the hilum. Professor Irisawa, please share your slides. Thank you, thank you. Um... Professor Amit, thank you for your um, kind introduce to me. It's okay? Yes, very good. You can see it. So um, it's my great honor to be here. Uh, thank you, uh, President uh, Professor Inoue and the Chairman uh, Professor Amit for giving this opportunity. Uh, my topic is endoscopic variation for biliary stenosis as the highest, especially transpapillary approach. So I think there are various opinions in this field. So also a part of my presentation may be similar to uh, Professor Lanson, uh, please listen. So in this presentation, I will show the current status and my data. Here, uh, you can see the image. So it seems like bile duct uh, with hepatic hilum. So sometimes we encounter the malignant stenosis as the hilus. Endoscopic papillary drainage uh, for these cases routinely performed as an effective palliation therapy. So this is a schema of the variation of the hilus stenosis, bismuth classification. So we, we have to make a strategy depending on the patient uh, situation. So for higher malignant biliary obstruction, a uh, consensus among experts is still far from being reached on the selection of stent and deployment procedures. So if ELCP show this image, so under the patient's condition is unresectable uh, higher obstruction, we have to perform stenting. So in such case, we will think about uh, which stent is the uh, most suitable uh, plastic or metal. So which uh, bile duct should be drained, so unilateral or bilateral. And uh, which is useful technique, uh, stent to stent or side by side. So uh, in this presentation, I will talk about these three issues. The first topic is uh, which stent is the most suitable, plastic or metal? So this table shows advantages and, other, and uh, disadvantages of plastic stent and metal stent. So uh, you can see the advantages of plastic stent are less expensive, easy insertion, easy removal exchange, and uh, no tumor ingress. But uh, disadvantages are short patency and the possibility of side branch occlusion. But uh, this is rare. So uh, on the other hand, the advantages of metal stent, bare metal stent, uh, long patency and no occlusion of side branches. But uh, disadvantages are expensive and difficult to remove under tumor ingress. 
So understanding these advantages and uh, disadvantages, we select which is better uh, depending on the cases. So this is the most recent recommendation for selection of the stent um, plastic or metal. So in patients who have short life um, expectancy uh, less than three months, the panel uh, suggests the uh, use of SEMS compared with plastic stent because of lower rate of in the intervention and the possibility improved survival. Otherwise, uh, either stent type may be used based on local expertise and uh, physician preference. So it is almost the same as the past literatures. So uh, we have to choose the kind of stent depending on the uh, predicted survival. So I understand the usefulness of metal stent uh, in the viewpoint of long patency. But uh, I love plastic stent because there are many benefits. So I'd like to use for the patient who is expected long lifetime. Now, one of the reasons for short patency of plastic stent is higher chance of clogging in the duodenum. Here you can see. Therefore, recently, uh, we can perform intrabiliary plastic stent placement, uh, means the uh, um, distal tip of the stent um, completely located within the bile duct. So this technique is expected prolongation of patency, avoiding sludge deposition. So this paper uh, shows the usefulness of the inside stent for patients with inoperable malignant hyaluronic obstruction. So the authors use the plastic stent with the strings to remove the stent. So you can see the finger. Um, inside the stent shows the prolongation of patency in comparison with a conventional stent. Conventional stent means the outside stent. So we tried pilot study comparing the patency plastic stent to metal stent using inside uh, stenting technique. So here you can see, although there is uh, no significant difference, but 50% uh, um, uh, patency period was longer in plastic stent. So 219 days. So it might be useful for plastic stent with inside technique, even if the higher structure. On the basis of our pilot study, now uh, when I perform stenting for higher carcinoma, I can use plastic stent even if the patient is expected uh, long survival more than three months. Now uh, I am studying. I show the case, um, I did place a three plastic stent for this patient using inside technique. Here, three stent, so all stent is inside stent. So this stent worked in 198 days, very long, very long. So as you can see, the technique may be one option for higher abstraction with low cost and easy to approach. So however, even if it is inside the stent, stent occlusion due to bacterial biofilm can occur here. So I introduced our preliminary study, a silver coated plastic stent. So we soaked the plastic stent with a silver coat, without silver coat, into the infected bile juice here. So five weeks later, um, there were many biofilms, biofilms here. So on the surface of the non-coated silver stent. On the other hand, there is almost no biofilm 
on the surface of silver coated stem. So, uh, silver coating will lead to clinical application of biliary stent with long term patency. So, next topic is uh, which is better, unilateral or bilateral? So I introduced a recent systematic review. So this paper had a, a 782 patients on nine previous reports. So bilateral stent had significantly low re-intervention rate compared with unilateral drainage. And there are no significant difference in technical success and early or late complication rates. Therefore, it may be better to choose bilateral stenting. This is a most recent recommendation. So also bilateral um, stenting is recommended. However, uh, it is still controversial. So uh, this statement mentions the uh, role of uh, palliative stenting of higher cholangeal carcinoma is drainage of adequate liver volume uh, more than 50%, irrespective of unilateral, bilateral, or multi-segmental stenting. So in my opinion, this way of thinking is the uh, best, I think. So final topic is uh, which use proof, uh, which useful technique, so stent to instant or side-by-side -side stent. So in use of metal stent. So this meta analysis was performed based on the six study with 315 patients. So no significant difference between these two groups, uh, bilateral, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, stent to stent and uh, side by side, with respect to clinical success, complications, and the stent dysfunction or overall survival. So the side-by-side -side group exhibited significantly lower technical success rates. So other showed the bilateral deployment of a uh, measure stent using stent-to-instant method. So it is uh, easy to me uh, in this case. But uh, sometimes very difficult. So at first, the insertion of the stent device into the left bile duct, and now uh, stent deployment above an intact structure of body. So so-called this is uh, inside the stent. So next. Um, seeking the light hepatic bile duct through the mesh of first uh, deployment stent. So obtaining the image of light love, and insertion the, insertion the same device in the light hepatic bile duct through the mesh of the first sense. But finally, deployment of the another uh, sense through the mesh. So also a uh, second uh, sense, also inside the stent. So I also perform a uh, side-by-side technique, but uh, I worry about over expansion to the hilus when I use a 10 millimeter metal stent. In addition to my ingross uh, is concerned in commonly used bare stent. So uh, I introduced a uh, new um, biliary stent. So this is uh, from um, made, by, made in Korea, so Aegis biliary stent. So this stent is a double bear, you can see double bear. So single bear or double bear. And the diameter is a uh, seven millimeter. So this stent is uh, very flexible and the uh, double bear is expected avoiding the tumor ingles. We can easily perform um, side by side using this stent without 
of、uh, expansion of the hires. Yeah, you can see the deployment of the seven millimeter、uh, double bear stent deployment. Yes. It is very easy. So I will show the case. This is a side by side case using our new stent. So you can see the、um, two guide wire and、uh, one、uh, metal stent device in the, into the left row. And next, another.、Um, Stent device into the right row. So this stent also、um, inside the stent. So deployment of the left side and second deployment of the right side. So the visibility of this stent is good and the operability. Is also excellent, I think. So,、uh, ladies and gentlemen,、uh, in conclusion, in my presentation, for the effective endoscopic papillary、uh, uh, palliation for biliary stenosis at the highest, the selection of the appropriate stent and procedure according to the patient's condition and anatomical position. Uh, is very important. So, and、uh, new innovation is expected in this field. Thank you for your kind attention. So, thank you, Professor Irisawa, for a fantastic presentation and、uh, very clear concepts. So, I think、uh, we can now proceed to some question answer session because this is a, a very interesting topic for an interventional ERCP specialist. In fact, Everyone will agree with me that this is like the last frontier in interventional ERCP, and it is also holy grail for the doctor who is performing this procedure. Because patient selection is difficult, selection of the proper technique is difficult, and finally, outcomes are also difficult because you never know, in spite of doing your best, these patients can land in severe cholangitis, which can be very difficult to handle. So, the questions which I want to raise now are right from the beginning of selection of patients.、Uh, I will start the discussion, but I'll be happy if any one of you h a v e any questions, you can raise the discussion and then we can sort of answer it or discuss it so that it will be beneficial to the viewer,、uh, to the attendee, where they can actually utilize it in their day to day practice. So, my first question is we always talk about life expectancy, life expectancy. How do you predict life expectancy? When a patient comes to you of high risk stricture with deep jaundice, how do you decide whether this patient is going to live three months, six months? On what parameters?、Yeah. That is my important question because, see, some patient may be deeply jaundiced with ascites,、mm. a tense tummy. Now, what are you going to do? So, first is that question. So, first is Professor Rungson. Can you tell me? Uh, Amit, you hit me to my heart. This is very <laughs> difficult. And you know,、uh, we all in the office are very optimistic. So, you know my answer. Although we have said three months is、uh, uh, a short life, but I mean, I never say that、uh, unless I would say certain patients who can be very deep jaundice. With prolonged problem time, with uh, uh, you know, the difficulty in terms of correction with vitamin K or those with ascites. Otherwise, I'm very optimistic to them. I would say that they can live longer than that. And as I can see in my slide, it better be I probably give them a metric stand that can provide a longer tendency instead of plastic stand. And generally, these days, I do plastic stand only those who have recurrent obstruction. So, at that, I can see that they are very at risk of s e e i n g some tumor and they are very well advanced. Or when we perform the HGS, 
because another uh, uh, you know the, the subject that we're talking about, which is better between the plastic stand uh, uh, for ATS or metric stand, because we, I feel that uh, we just need only the Tesla to be open. So maybe in my opinion, plastic stand is enough in terms of the, that purpose. So to me, uh, as you uh, the, the question, measure of those, we are optimistically to, to them and give them the, the best care uh, for them, uh, unless we see that very advanced tumor. But uh, bottom line, many of them, uh, we end up with better do nothing. There's too much. Okay, so Professor Irisawa, which are the patients which will not take up for stenting at all? When you look at them, a patient of obstructive jaundice with hyalur block, which patient you will say that, no, we don't want to do anything. Just leave the patient alone. So, um, very difficult. So, if the patient have a, uh, ascites uh, due to carcinoma okay. or uh, multiple metastasis uh, in the liver or other organ, so uh, I guess short patency. So, uh, basically, uh, measurable stent is recommended, but uh, at first stent, I think is a plastic stent is better because uh, uh, um, especially inside. So if the patient um, responds uh, uh, by chemotherapy or chemolization therapy, so um, the lifetime is uh, prolonged, prolonged. So at first I perform the plastic stent. Okay, so my, my next question by Brunson and Professor Irisawa is, do you really go on the bismuth classification nowadays? Because see, in your consensus, Asia-Pacific consensus, you had reached a conclusion that anything beyond bismuth 2, bismuth 3 and 4 is more suitable for PTBD mm -hmm. rather than endoscopic stenting. But now in the present scenario, with the availability of EUS-guided, availability of advanced PTBD, combined technique, do you really now image and if you have beyond bismuth three, do you do you select these patients for stenting or no? So, yes. Professor, yes, Rangsan first. Oh, what right. is your? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, as you can see from my slide, uh, if you remember that, that is the old slide ten years ago. But I already updated that. Uh, in the past ten years ago, we said that for those advanced uh, high obstruction, we don't touch them if possible. Or if you want to touch, you have to have the uh, IRT in backup uh, really nearby. But this day, as you can uh, can see that we can access those uh, inaccessible the uh, intrahepatic duct uh, much easier. So I would say that uh, you know uh, for those advanced hyaluronic obstruction uh, for bismuth three and four, uh, if uh, you think this is the area that you can access by US, I think the analysis can go this day. And I think we need to update our consensus very soon. What about you, Professor Irisawa? Will you select patients of bismuth three and above mm -hmm. for stenting? Yeah. Yes. Uh, first checking is uh, transpapillary. So but, yes. uh, difficult. So. I use uh, interventional EUS, EUS HGS, hmm, hepatic gas. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the consensus of today's panel is that we do select patients beyond bismuth two. So bismuth three, bismuth four, with the availability of EUS guided technique, we can proceed. Now my next question. Now, I'm sorry, but I'm asking question one after the other, but you feel free to ask questions in between. My next question to you is, do you need a tissue diagnosis? before you think of placing a metal stent? Do you obtain tissue with breast cytology, cholangioscopy, or if the imaging suggests a malignant high stricture, you go ahead and place a metal stent? What is uh, my question to Professor Deeri Saba? Do you take any tissue diagnosis or you straight away go for metal stenting or plastic stenting? Hmm. Yes, at first um, I perform the brushing and uh, okay. using maxi forceps, yes. So, if your brushing is negative, do you still mm -hmm. proceed with the metal stent or you place a plastic stent and yes, continue plastic. to take brushing? I think plastic stent is better. Mm. So, and, uh, what a, we perform the um, Li and cytology, by cytology. Um, Li cytology. Yes, yes. And uh, sometimes. What about you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I perform the ESFNA for tumor. Mm. Okay. What about you, uh, uh, Professor Rangsan? My uh, limitation because uh, is the because I prefer to use metal stent. So, preferably, I would like to confirm the tissue diagnosis. 
So one thing that I would uh, like to dilute uh, because uh, we didn't put in the talk is to confirm it with Clan Jockey guided bounty. And we have seen that with the guided bounty under Clan Jockey, uh, the view is much higher than the brushing of you know, under Jockey guidance. And uh, usually uh, people think about it has to be negative first and then you perform the bounty. But a lot of times, force stenting, even with classic stenting, your effect uh, is difficult to read because the, the, the beauty about uh, client job is that it's not only the tissue, it's the image impression. So uh, we are coming with the consensus uh, on the, this, in this regard in SPD in a few months. And you can see that with image impression, with the new digital client job scope, uh, can provide you with high accuracy. And uh, to me, we can make it uh, back to the authority, but we don't image. We have to, 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 to do the permanent journey with the medicine better. So as far as possible, we should obtain a tissue diagnosis, correct? Is that yes. your uh, take yes. on both no, of you? I, I could, both, uh, will, both will agree? Time I cannot go back. It become benign, right? I, mean, I feel, you know, in the past, few of those patients they end up with, you know, uh, uh, having the medicine for their benign condition and then uh, yes. suffer from the obstruction later. Now, we just heard from Professor Irisawa that uh, plastic stents also work very well in hyaluronic blocks, and especially the silver-coated plastic stents. Uh, my question to you is, see, the hyaluronic blocks are very tight. They can be very strictures. So passing a 10 French plastic stent mm -hmm. or 8.5 plastic stent sometimes is very difficult, and that too if you want to put multiple stents. Mm -hmm. So how do you overcome this difficulty technically? Do you dilate the strictures with a special balloon? What do you do? How do you overcome it? How can you place multiple 10 French plastic stents? Yes. Uh, hopefully, I can, uh, I'd like to use uh, 10 French. So, other than uh, 8.5 uh, or 7 French. But uh, um, very strict uh, stricture is a uh, very tough uh, procedure. So, um, Usually, I can perform the balloon dilation using EPBD balloon. So, okay. but finally, I can um, I insert the stent. Hmm. And where do you place uh, plastic? Uh, some cases, yeah, yes, yeah, uh, only guy wise can go to, and even you know, the, if you first go with balloon, it's impossible. Is there any trick for you to, you know, pass the balloon or any? You know, device that can be required to balloon for the easy shower. I mean, you, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, diameter? Sometimes it's very tight. Passing. Yeah, very tight. Uh, so yeah. only diver can pass. Can, uh, do you have any additional device uh, that free ballooning? Mm. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, we uh, use uh, three or four millimeter balloon diameter. So, and uh, in Japanese company, uh, made the uh, so called LEN, R E N. Mm. So length is a very um, shape tip of the bar, um, balloon. So uh, there is no, um, there is no, uh, to, um, ledge. <laughs> so, it's very tapered, very tapered. Yes, yeah, very tapered, yes. Mm. Very tapered. Yes. Yeah. So can you sometimes use a cystotome to cut through the structure? Ah, yes. But, uh, what we use, yeah. Yes. Um, Yes, this is a good uh, opinion, but uh, I uh, never use the system. No. I, I use it very often these days. <laughs> in the past, uh, we encounter with difficulty and end up even, uh, we don't have your uh, special you know, uh, uh, device. So, in those who fail to uh, go with a uh, smaller straw handle, then later, uh, we, in the past, we use 10 receiver. But I still, you know, this got to pass. And uh, I think this day, we better off using. The six French one, I think, is, is pretty good before we do balloon dilation in the mouth. Yeah, we need to use that. Correct. Uh, so now that comes, I just want to ask you about RFA. See, because RFA, it helps to prolong the longevity of the stent and possibly also affect the survival. I don't know whether it's a survival. Now, why, do not, why don't we use RFA in each and every patient of stenting, irrespective whether you put a plastic or a metal? Because then you can, this is like an adjuvant therapy to stenting. 
So if you have IFA available, do you think we should use it routinely for every case? Uh, well, uh, Rangsan? Very good question, I mean, because uh, uh, one of the mechanisms that probably uh, IFA could add on uh, beyond the extent is not only, you know, provide chemistry, but it could ablate or decrease or uh, not completely devour the tumor, but uh, I think uh, I think a group from AIT has shown that uh, they show the I, uh, L6 level became lower and uh, patient uh, performance or status become better. Uh, the only difficulty uh, of this area is uh, probably less paper came out because of to cast the very angulated, uh, uh, you know, the uh, intrapsic duct sometimes uh, is difficult compared to ablation of the extra hepatic duct obstruction. Second is uh, because of high vasculature in this area. Uh, we did not see, you know, the you know the very dramatic opening sometime in those with uh, you know, the teasing effect. And we are afraid to go on with higher voltage or the duration okay. because we are afraid of causing that perforation in this area. So this is very, very cringy to say and uh, very, very typical in terms of the risk of perforation. Uh, and so far, there's no RCT or the CV from Japan and uh, many other out there. I think also the other team also have had and done some. And uh, I would say that yeah. uh, only in selective cases, not all of them. Okay. Uh, Do you use RFA, Professor Diri Sava, anytime? No. So RFA no, is never. not available in Japan. Not available. Okay. Mm. Now, coming to your plastic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, yeah. Shama, I'm interested in terms of your technique of, uh, you know, bilateral stenting. Actually, the, you know, metric stent, uh, something that we haven't talked in uh, the uh, uh, today talk is about the intervention after recurrent obstruction. We would see that the, which one, I mean, let me ask you a uh, uh, different Step in stand or side by side, which one uh, for you to go back uh, is easier? Oh, side by side is easier, I think. Do you, do you play the stand outside the capilla or do you play it inside for the side by side? I, I, I'm sorry. The distal end of the stand is it outside the capilla or mm. is it in, uh, inside the duct? Inside. Inside. Yes. And can, uh, for you to go back, it's not too difficult. Mm, mm, no, I think not. Definitely cannulation. Yeah. So, I but uh, uh, use uh, uh, the um, length of stent. So, different lengths of stent. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm. So, one is outside, one is inside, is it? No, uh, double inside. So the both one are inside. Is, yes, both inside. Both are inside the papilla, about the, the papilla. Yeah. Okay. Now, you also put the inside stand for plastic. Even plastic stands you release inside the duct. Right? Yes, yes. Mm. Now, how do you change it? Suppose you need to exchange that plastic stand if it gets blocked. From inside, how do you take it out and change it? It's easy uh, to ca take, catch it out and pull it out? It only has a string. Yeah, has a string, string, yes. It has a string. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Mm. Okay, so that's very interesting concept. Any other question you have got, Rangsan? Yes, uh, I I think the if the thing is about the training. I think you may be a better answer because you have trained a lot of people. When did you let uh, them do the highlight, uh, you know, ERP? I think a lot of time to me, I mean, the many of fellow graduates that uh, they may not have enough experience for this one. But uh, you think when I, uh, when when they should be ready to do this? Have you at that own hospital or you know, doing training? Uh, you know, what is the learning curve? That's you know, the simple case of this one. The, so, Professor Irisawa, when do you allow your trainees to do Hyler block ERCP? Is it at the end of the fellowship? Is it after a lot of experience in ERCP? Hmm. I think um, so. Um, the beginning of ERCP. Can perform the um, try to try to the higher um, carcinoma, but uh, okay. if it is difficult, so change to expert. Mm. Expert. Yeah. So everyone should try. Yes. So ac according to Professor Irisawa, you can begin even learning how to do ERCP in higher block. So 
though it is difficult even placing a guide wire selectively in various ducts that is also difficult mm-hmm. so which guide wire do you prefer which guide wire if you want to go into various multiple ducts in bismuth 3 or bismuth 4 which is the best which is the guide wire you prefer i uh, usually i use uh, um olympus uh busy glide 2 so we say like two i'm going to type so what about you rangsan yeah yeah uh, and, you know uh we we have to have many of those available and okay we start the jack one and if we fail sensitive simulation we use the you know we could like but this day again i'm a fan of uh, telangioscopy uh we can use that one to do selective simulation especially this day uh one thing that we have been talk is about the risk of cholecystitis some of those uh who got a big stone inside the gallbladder we also uh in our putting goblet stent before we putting the metal stent in the helm so we use the uh, uh, you know the kind of to take as to test those um by one certain step one very important question is all of you you are both of you are treating hyalur blocks routinely you must be facing the problem of cholangitis after stenting patient starts developing fever some of the ducts get blocked they develop pus infection what is your next step how do you treat them see possibly when you do multiple blocks hyalur blocks there may be some ducts which are left undrained and once the patient develops infection it's very difficult to control it by doing any sort of drainage procedure so what do you do next if you have a patient who has developed infection because this is a very, quite a common issue as far as hyalur blocks ercp is concerned you must have possibly realized it so rangsan what will you do yes i as i mentioned that the road map is the most important thing about uh, this site is the main that we want to bring and uh, one thing i had mentioned is that to avoid over injecting contract um now to serve we do reciprocate uh, contract injection after we get deeply inside the duct and once you get below the hilum stop injecting so but even that uh, we have seen that you know in india uh, i think a one paper on air cleanser can be helpful but i found that sometimes even just only guy why pass to that inside the duct that duct will become contaminated and develop cholangitis later and interesting those cholangitis usually develop not the next day usually 48 hours so in those uh, first i mean uh, we don't do routine for phylactic uh can you ask me but uh we uh, prefer to do the tabatinin based blood spectrum and diuretics and look at the uh immediately ct scan to see that is there any duct that we have left in the duct in complete drainage and if we see that the duct is uh you know completely drained and uh the only the small area uh, we look at the job ladder uh this one thing that if john is coming down patient develop fever a lot of them they develop acute polycystic cystitis because of you know over of uh, compression from the uh, metabolic medicine so first if the john doesn't come down uh we think it could be incomplete drainage but if john is come down it, it could be a small segment that left undrained or polycystic and then the, then we decide and many of those uh who cannot be reached by the us but usually go back that it is quite difficult uh we have to call the ir to be help and do selective and many of them end up with doing anti gas stenting down uh to the scapula like and from the outside and that to save the patient but uh even we try that very hard we can see that in our series almost 50% of them develop cholangitis you know but usually we can take care of them later on so what is your experience professor irisawa what is the percentage of cholangitis in patients who do ercp for hyalur block percentage percentage of cholangitis yes. of percentage infection is uh, not so high yeah so not high. so high about uh, less than 10% mm. oh very good very good but uh, if the patient have a um, have a fever or um raising of the um AOP or gamma ZTP and bilirubin. So first, uh, CT is taken to understand the part that require additional drainage. Okay. So, and then ERCP is performed again. But uh, okay. it is very important. So avoid contrast, 
as much as possible. Hmm. Correct. So if difficult, um, consider treatment with PTBD or USHGS. Okay. So, so very interesting discussion. And in the stent in stent technique, because it appears that stent in te- stent technique also is a very easy thing to do. So, which is the stent which you use nowadays? I mean, in Japan, which one? In uh, in Thailand, which one? Which stent in stent is the, you think is the preferred one for the for the self expanding stent in stent technique? What is your first? Yeah, Professor Irisawa, mm-hmm. when you do a stent, stent in stent technique, mm-hmm. which is the stent you use? Which stent? Which stent? Is there any preference? Any preference? You have any preference? Is there any Japanese stent? Oh, yes, Japanese stent. Uh, Japanese uh, no, stent. Korean stent. <laughs> yes. Korean stent. Yes. Korean uh, stent. Yes, it is. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. What about you, uh, Rangsan? Yes, I, 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 I use uh, many brands, but uh, bottom line, I would you know, to the, uh, you know, audience is don't uh, do different brands for, you know, one patient because the real exam cycle could be different. Let's say, like, I can say that most of them have really strong uh, exam cycle. It can compress others easily. So you go with the, that one, you better use the other, uh, you mean, the other side with the same brand. You know, otherwise, you know, the, you end up with the collapsing the uh, upper system. And the length, uh, I prefer the one that uh, can provide me 12 uh, centimeters. So uh, I would like to go back uh, if they have the be obstruction. So my, uh, you know, the basic, uh, you know, recipe is 10 millimeter, uh, 12 cm stem. Uh, you know, any brand is okay, but it has to be the same brand for one patient. Okay. And when you do the plastic stenting, Professor Irisawa, yes. do you do change of stent or you just, they are the permanent stents? Once you put the plastic stents inside, uh, do you prophylactically change them if the patient is living longer? Hmm. Or you just change them or do any treatment only if the patient develops reobstruction? Yes. Um, basically, so um, we have no schedule to remove the okay. change of stents. So if the patient have a coronavirus, so we can perform ERCP and change the stent. Oh, okay. Otherwise, you leave the stents until the patient is living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you follow the same principle, Pro- Rangsan? I uh, usually uh, do with metal stent, uh, but uh, metal stent. some of uh, those who got plastic stent because we cannot play the metal stent, uh, we usually call them in a week or so because we don't think it can last that long because. Uh, the, uh, the so we have a of Okay, so I think it was a very, very interesting discussion. Uh, so I just would like to sum up the whole thing because now uh, we have almost reached one hour of our presentations and discussion. As a summing up, I think uh, I would like to say, please correct me if I'm wrong and you can do some additions, is a pre-procedure selection. Uh, we are very optimistic. And as far as possible, we consider that the patient is going to have a a longer lifespan unless the patient has gross ascites, very poor condition like edema of the feet, cachexia, loss of weight, and very high jaundice, and maybe multiple metastasis. These are the patients we will not touch. But otherwise, we will be positive and we will try to treat them. Second, if if, if I'm right, uh, correct me, Every patient, you will do an MRCP for a proper mapping of the bismuth classification and if possible, a CT volumetry so that you get an idea whether you are going to drain 50% of liver. Third, you attempt ERCP first. And ERCP, we try to put as many strengths as possible. And this, of course, Professor Irisawa will start with plastic. Maybe Rangsan will start with metallic. Depends upon what you are used to. And if you can dilate the stricture well, dilatation of the stricture is essential for hyalur block. So it is a consensus between all of us that every stricture has to be properly dilated. And only then we can place the plastic or a metal stent. And in case we have any undrained ducts left behind, then we follow it up with a US-guided hepaticogastrostomy or maybe a associated PTBD. 
RFA is not to be done routinely. It is done in some patients, uh, possibly those who have got proliferative cholangiocarcinoma rather than strictures cholangiocarcinoma, maybe RFA will be more useful. And we do not do prophylactic stent exchange. We call these patients back only when they develop obstruction. So this is what is my summing up of this whole discussion on palliation or treatment of hyalur blocks. Uh, do you want to have any additions to that? And all said and done, uh, all of us do see hyalur block is difficult to treat and it can be associated with cholangitis. So as far as possible, inject very minimum contrast inside the ducts and try to achieve optimal drainage. That is the message which we are going to convey to our attendees for Tokyo Life 21. And once again, on behalf of Professor Rangsan, Professor Irisawa, and myself, we would like to thank Professor Inoi for giving us this opportunity to conduct this very interesting symposium on the treatment of hyalur blocks uh, endoscopically and otherwise. So thank you so much. And I hope uh, all the attendees have enjoyed this symposium. Thank you, thank you, so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.